Linux MMO cast. I didn't <laughs> know Pedro brought up that he was watching yeah. a video, and I took that yeah. as an opportunity to derail the conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> LGC, L- care. LGC care. <laughs> Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin. That is Jordan Swang. And the Blue Flash himself, Pedro Mateus. Together with you, live, watching us on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Not affiliated with the drugs. We're sick and tired of that horrible accusation. It's I'm walking totally... assistance Voltron here. <laughs> I am not doing cocaine off screen for it the is last a time. <laughs> filthy rumor spread by naysayers and just haters on this show. It has nothing to do with the drugs. I mean, it yes, is um, just blowing our noses. Mobile yeah. positive Voltron. There's nothing wrong with that. It's <laughs> giant cocaine. <buggers>. Right. So. <laughs> We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Stick around. We got the NVIDIA thing. Duke Nukem forever. That's a thing. And uh, a couple updates on, well, a game Jordan played a lot. And I'm, I'm kind of curious. I, I got some words to share with everyone on that. But what's new? What's going on? It's been a week since we've convened. Now, Jordan, me and you got to hang out. Uh, we're, we're doing uh, Swang's Edgemaquaken. S- yeah, I don't there's know. really not a clean way to go about that, is there? <laughs> no, no, no. Jordan's never played through Fake. all of the original Quake. No, uh, my, my first Quake was 3 Arena, so that had no story. That was just all PvP. So Right. And uh, so we've been going through the Quake Beth Mastered Edition and Coop. You know, granted, we take seven to eight months off between... Uh, to the like, <laughs> you know you know it, it, uh, as this tradition with like our LGC playthroughs like how long did it take us to get through trying for like two years yeah yeah because we didn't really want to play it <laughs> yeah I, fair <laughs> Qu- 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 Quake e- even Beth mastered Quake is a much better game than trying for yeah, so. this is true this is true had some fun doing that but um what have I been up to if you're curious if you happen to have a Galaxy S6 uh, Lite. Uh, Wi-Fi or um, LTE version. Lineage 19 is out for it, official. It does install. You will jump through hoops if you want to maintain your current install, up to and uh, including extracting firmware from the image, but it can be done. Make sure you update your firmware to uh, Android 12. Outside of that, still playing around with the compiler, learning some new things, making it do things, audio things. Oh, and I finished the NetCheck video. The prophecy is fulfilled. (laughs) Hopefully. I'm like, I'm 99% sure what is currently posted in our announcement section in our discord. I haven't had a chance to post it on Patreon yet, but that'll be up for everyone. If you're not in our discord uh, tomorrow. And yeah, it's, it's taking a like 45 minute talk and trying to get it all together. And I think I did an okay job where I got like most of the, like higher level questions and like, Hey, you know, just the conceptual, like, what does this thing do? How do you do it? What are all these moon glyphs? Cause once you see the moon glyph that's typed out for thread booper to connect, you would see that without an explanation. And Jordan knows when you go looking for that explanation of what do those flags do, what are they, Jordan? The, what that dash I and dash O and capital I dash O. Or? Well, the answer to that is incorrect on the documentation. <laughs> oh right, that 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 too. Well, uh, t- considering it tells you to use the wrong version of NetJack to do the <laughs> NetJack stuff, yeah, it's very, not 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 very very well documented. Oh man, have you documented anything this week? Ah, I did. I wrote a bunch of infrastructure code about blind password rotation, and I taught a bunch of people about the theory behind it. Uh, but yeah, no, I've been just keeping on. Lifting weights. Uh, I got a big D and D game next week that we're gonna do in person, so that's I'm excited for that. Um, How many people? Uh, depends on who actually shows up. Maybe like seven or eight. All right. Yeah. Do you have like a fancy character? Uh, I'm I, I got to be the dungeon master, so. Uh, they 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 will have fancy characters who will get I don't know slaughtered by lizard men. Ah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill them out of spite because that's what I do. I'm not going to kill them out of spite. I'm going to kill them because the system is rigged against their favor. That's why. And that's what I would say if I was being recorded. How about you, Pedro? 
Uh, I, well, first of all, I made the mistake of uh, listening to the full 12 hour uh, video that Patrician TV made about the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. <laughs> I'd already listened to the one that he'd done about Morrowind. So it's like, oh, the next one is Oblivion. All right. Oh, crap. The Morrowind one was seven hours long. This one is 12 hours long. So, all right, cool. Let, let's listen Sounds to that. Sounds like some good background. Did you see the video? I didn't know enough about it. Uh, the um, Evercrack. Oh yeah, the, the 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 dragon waking thing. I read through that entire mm-hmm. article. It, oh. it it read like some fucking Dungeons and Dragons shit, but then you realize it is just like people at their keyboard. Like, yeah, if yes. you wake the dragon, it like removes this boss and all of the other enemies whose sole purpose is to like give you the items to unlock the boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To which I retort, and people weren't happy, you know, the people no. that are still playing EverQuest. Okay, yeah. Like, <laughs> EverQuest released when I was a teenager. I mean, they, they, they mentioned that the last expansion, which was like the 18th one, was released like a year or two ago or some shit. Like, well, I mean, in the, in the age of WoW, you know, yeah, like EverQuest was OG WoW, but like that, mm-hmm. that was yeah. the one I was with a friend out and about. He bought the copy, and I think it was like legitimately 60 pounds. And I'm like, what's this about? Give me bucks. Because we had big boxes back then. I'm like, reading the back, like, you, you have to pay a subscription for the. Even back then, that did not settle with me. I'm like, shouldn't this be free? I, I, you already I, I, paid I to, for the game. Why are you paying them more yes. money every yeah. month? <laughs> I, I had to explain to my girlfriend what EverQuest was. And I'm like, EverQuest wasn't the first MMO, but I think it was the first MMO to actively ruin people's lives. Hmm. First that was the, documented yeah, the first on the internet. That kind yeah. of adoption. Yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe some Ultima online, but I think Evercrack was like the OG. Like people people kind of lost their jobs because they just yeah. To play Ultima. Everything. I'd I'd make the argument that Ultima was the first MMO, or unless you want to count Muds, like the original uh, Neverwinter Nights, I think, the yeah, I, I, <laughs> AOL I, I, I think, one. I, I think ne- Neverwinter and the Dark Sun one, like technically yes. predate EverQuest as as MMOs. But anyways. We, 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 this isn't Linux MMO cast. I don't know. <laughs> Pedro brought up that he was watching yeah. a video, and I took that yeah. as an opportunity to derail the conversation. Absolutely. LGC, know, care. LGC care. Yeah. LGC, just fuck, fuck your conversational train of thought. Uh, Kim, no, do not fuck the conversational train of horse. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, you can try to fuck the conversational train of horse, but, and I'll, I'll tell you very certainly, there is no light at the end of that tunnel. It's the steam. Linux. Well, that was back in, for- in court, you guys. Or Yay! I, Wait, I, 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 I mean, boo. They never uh, left. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you well, merely adopted I mean, the legal judicial system. They, 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 try, they try to escape, but I'm once they get Batman. out, you, 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 they keep getting pulled back in. Yeah, so um, part of the antitrust lawsuit that Wolfire and others have filed against Valve, um, the judge has walked back their position about some of the, uh, some of the claims that he said, oh, they're not actually... Doing antitrust behavior, um, boy. The, the, yeah, Judge Kogenhauer changed his mind. He was saying that thirty um, percent was okay for competing against brick and mortar stores, but now that brick and mortar stores don't really make a business selling video games anymore, that it shouldn't be as high. Uh, there's there's also some other talk about uh, letting the favored nation um, uh, allegations go through as well. Uh, other 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 companies have been. Um, yeah, those are the only ones that are going through. Yeah, yeah, because like, uh, like what Amazon is doing it, Walmart is doing it, uh, so, several other companies are doing this, and so a number of lawyers are taking them to task of, on that, which I, I say is a good idea. Like, mm-hmm. on, like, yeah, yeah. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to influence pricing outside of your store. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that is that is a scummy move, and it is Valve very much flexing their position. But when you look at what Valve has been doing and how they don't really advertise anything. They're, they don't have to because Steam is in that position. Uh, but they don't really advertise. They don't really have the kind of aggressive, almost draconian monetization like Epic and EA and Ubisoft, Ubisoft. on top of... Yeah. yeah. Uh, you you it don't is, have some courts, Pedro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is... Um, Okay, yes, they are the most popular, but they are still the most popular because it is still the best option. And uh, we've brought up in the past of all the things that Valve is actually giving developers for that 30%. So 
maybe you know Valve give developers the option to forego the 30% if they're willing to give up the forums the entire community hub and everything else that it provides you don't so, get access to the Steamworks VPN the game is forever in Proton Limbo it's never going to get verified or anything for the Steam Deck um, there's no trading cards no wishlist metrics uh, you don't get anything except for the store page and the repo space to host your game so I, w- I would say in theory that's good, except the only people who would actually be doing that are EA and Ubisoft because they don't need any of that shit because they have their own service. And that stuff is And part everyone of the- would give them shit for it the moment they released one game that didn't do it. <laughs> Right. And, and, you know, people will still buy the game because that, that that's what happens when you're titans of industry, right? How about this? Yeah. How about we simplify this? We don't make it so complex. Here's what we do. Um, we're going to pretend we're Valve. And um, here's the thing. You you want, like, a lower cut? Yeah, we'll do 12%, but you can't generate Steam keys. Yeah, don't uh, yeah, get and, keys and to sell on third-party websites there. Yep. Because <laughs> the reason I bring that up, selling your game at a lower price, that's been brought up. I was reading through the legal bits. And that only applies... Because, you know, they're like, hey, the Steam says we can't sell our game at a lower price outside of the Steam store. That's not the full story. What they meant to say is outside of the Steam store from keys that we automatically generate that we don't pay anything for. So you can't have one price on your Steam store and you can spool up, you know, like somebody wants, oh, I'll buy a thousand keys from you for X or whatever. Yeah, that, that opens the door to fraud if they didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, the, the door is already open, Pedro. That's what, that's, <laughs> yes. We've been talking about it for a number of years. The, the, doors, the door has been straight up stolen at this point. There's just a hole in the wall. <laughs> they took the whole door. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I mean, I, I would like an alternative to Steam on uh, Linux. That'd be neat. Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be very nice to have, you know, actual competition to Steam, not, you know, uh, Tim Sweeney are rocking up and actively trying to buy developers so that they have exclusives for an entire year and uh, straight up hating on Linux. I seriously don't yeah. think he gives a fuck about <laughs> Linux. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't. He, he, he likes the attention that trolling oh, Linux yeah. users I mean, gives him. He's, he's, he's the atypical, like, Oh, I can say something spicy. Watch the Twitter hands. <laughs> Dance monkeys. But hey, at the end of the day, I mean, Steam, everyone, I, I got a, like a mixed feeling on this simply because Steam sucked for a long time. Steam didn't get to where it's at by just poof, everything. I mean, you're looking at what? How long? 18 years now? You, you, you can uh, look 2003, at 2003, so 19. 19 years now. To, to, to your point, that whole Steam icon thing from a couple weeks ago, right? right. Where, yeah, like there's no consistent UI design because they keep improving stuff and yeah, they're not going back and fixing old stuff. They're finally getting to a point um, where they're at. So like, they, they, I guess where I'm coming from, I kind of feel like Valve's earned where they're at now. So yeah, it's 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 not like they, they they swung their weight around out of nowhere. This this was sort of a natural consequence of them being like really the only people occupying the space seriously yeah. for over a decade. And yeah, it's 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 a lot harder for other companies to catch up. It's the it's the network bias, right? But that's the thing. Everything's already been done. They have the exact model as how to do it right, and they keep epic game storing it whenever they release something so it doesn't but even have a freaking um shopping Pedro, cart <laughs> tim is spending all of epic's money actually like paying for copies of games for people so that other people don't have to buy things on the epic game store because that's a miserable experience they're spending yes. that money and spend of the development funds to actually improve that <laughs> you know so, what like, I, I would modify that with um like probably unreal engine 5 money at this point Pro- yeah, probably. It's still Fortnite money. It- it's still the cash cow. It's still Fortnite. <laughs> but, I mean, there's that. Uh, in I-, I think when I step away from the situation and I look at Valve, when I think about soulless corporations, you can't do better than Valve that yeah. I know of. Like, they haven't done anything really dicky that, I mean, yeah, the Australia thing. The Fair. Australia thing, <laughs> banning... Um, the developer of uh, Euro Truck Simulator, Tomas, mm-hmm. uh, banned him because he reported a bug. They didn't fix it. He's like, okay, here's how you exploit this bug. Then they banned him. It's like, <laughs> really, Valve? Really? <laughs> I, 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 mean, and, I mean, and to Valve's, uh, to, to Valve's, to Ven's point, like, they're, they're all soulless corporations, right? They're, they're not, you can't, like, think of them as good people or even people in general. They're just entities. 
Mm. Uh, they're trying <laughs> trying to make as much money as possible. Pedro, um, you have a Steam Deck, and there's something you want it that everyone's excited about, and it's something we're like, why? Is it, is it, welcome to week two of like, why isn't this built into the Steam client? What, yeah, why wasn't it uh, right there from the start? But uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the big update that came out for the Steam Deck, which everyone's been talking about, is per uh, application performance profiles. You want a game to be 60 FPS uh, with FSR, with, um, I don't know, like half of the uh, shader uh, the shader compilation speed to save battery and just whatever settings you can think to set on the Steam overlay, you can set it and then set a completely different one t- for a different game. And it switches between the two. Uh, it also uh, improves a bunch of um, like online, offline, going between online mode and offline mode, which it's a portable device. Yeah, kind of need it. Uh, and no, um, no, no. I always have my Steam Deck hardwired. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. If you, but, if you um, want that wired gabling cable, right? Yeah. I, I, listen, I got a power over Ethernet. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, like all the big updates that come out. Uh, they finally, finally, uh, also managed to, um, you know, screw up a couple of things. Specifically, one of the ones that's still there even after they released the hotfix, like, the day after. Uh, it fixed the, um, if you were trying to apply a per-app, uh, profile thing on a non-Steam game, like emulator games, those weren't working. Uh, the TDP slider was not showing the correct value and a few other things, but... I noticed that if you grabbed a community profile and you try to, say, alternate um, the Y sensitivity or the Y orientation of the right analog stick, so you move the analog stick down to look up type of situation, that's how my brain works. I'm one of those people. Uh, But that isn't working. Uh, The moment you hit the button to go into the options to do that, you can't do it. So Aww. you better <laughs> you better hope that the game um, actually lets you uh, change that because otherwise you're not. <laughs> Jordan, we're deckless, but do you get any thoughts on this? I mean, yeah, the the per app performance profile thing is, I think, the like Pedro said, the big one. Because especially if you're going to, like, my plan when I get the damn thing is going to be using it as a portable emulation station. So being able to set all the performance profiles for those non-Steam apps like the emulators, that's gonna be that's gonna be killer. That's gonna let me stay on the toilet for hours at a time. Oh man, seems fair. Seems fair. What else do we? Oh, client update. Yeah, brand new client <laughs> update. It's pretty boring. Uh, there is only. Uh, it's mostly just the beta roundup. Uh, they fix the thing with the short spaces and the uh, non-steam apps for uh, Linux shortcuts. Uh, but one thing, one one note that did slip through that was kind of interesting. Uh, there was some corruption fixes on uh, Vulkan for Intel XE GPU. So we're starting to get some XE fixes floating in. Hmm. Uh, yeah, thought. That's interesting. I, I don't no, know. I mean, that's legit. Fix corruption. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I guess somebody was in South Korea and snagged that laptop. Like, hey. Well, I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure they they sent Valve like, hey, here, here's like six of these fucking cards. Make sure all your shit works on it, right? Those like, are just XZ CPUs. They're not specifying the ARC ones. So they, it might be like the... The laptop ones, gen, yeah, laptop ones. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but but I th- I, th- I think they're, they're still using the same drivers, no? Yeah. Yeah, so, it is uh, the R- i nine six five. I don't know. I nine nine one five something. Yeah, some some something yeah like something that. like that. But yeah, no. The the one that stuck out to me is this is oh fixed adding non steam shortcuts with spaces in the path. When did the um the Steam beta come out for Linux twenty twelve? Yeah, it's Why only been would nine you years. Have spaces in a path, you <laughs> Windows monster. <laughs> Uh, you gotta, gotta, use, gotta use underscores. That's the thing. Even like native, uh, native Linux games, a lot of them. If you go to the Steam Apps folder, a bunch of them have spaces in the path. So clearly, that was working for the internal Steam stuff. Why was it not working for the non-Steam shortcuts? It, it, it seems like a weird <laughs> disparity. Because there. you know what, Pedro, <laughs> those shortcuts were holding out. They were purest. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, okay. at least, at least <laughs> maybe maybe they were on Android. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. I downloaded it. And, I mean, I, I always ride the lightning on the um, updates, oh. but I haven't noticed anything. The only thing, I probably like Jordan. I'm sitting like 
Does this one come with a fix for Fall Guys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Got to wear a mat. Um, not terribly exciting. Unlike uh, an update that... <laughs> What we, it's been promised for a while. Well, this, this is like to the point of that. This update is to tell you that there's not really an update, but <laughs> not yet. Well, the, to be fair, the, the the update here is yes, there's an Android version now. Uh, you can uh, download it on your phone or your tablet. If you have an Android tablet, if you're like Ven, basically, uh, you're one of the three people left in the world that uses Android tablets. Uh, the you can get uh, tanks, uh, Shell Shock Live. You can download it. You can play it uh, on your Android or iOS device. But there's also the V1.1 dev that they've been promising since January now that everyone's been uh, kind of waiting for. And if you go in game and you look at the game chat, outside of all the uh, bang free gift uh people that are just spamming that because they want the free stuff that you get every day um outside of that there's people talking about the new update of the new update so it's coming which is, which is not out yet this update no. was hey about the uh, new update it's not out yet by the way buy our android um yeah, mm-hmm. they, they they committed that uh, cardinal sin of they have uh, the mobile version and the desktop version on two different development tracks, and so now they got to support two different mm-hmm. code bases, doubling their work. Um, yeah, not not great. Well, but they're going to work know, on the crossplay. Are, Here's something I was very happy to see though. Yep, yeah. is that I went to the app. First off, good fucking luck finding this game. Shellshock, type that into Android uh, in your Play Store. I dare you. I double dare you. I had to go to their website to find the direct link to that. Then I could oh get boy. to it. I was happy to see that it's four ninety nine, but it could have been one ninety nine. It could have been ninety nine cents. At least it had a price on it. And it wasn't free to play, pay to win type cross play bullshit infecting Scott's precious uh, tank rods <laughs> from God's ecosystem. I got, I got a question for you though. Do you think the one point one update will finally remove the Unity scream of no? No. Okay. I, you know what? <laughs> now, you know, here, here's like a weird take on that. Mine, anyway. As somebody who streams, yeah, it's actually kind of nice. Yeah, isn't it's it? got an yeah, yeah, window done. That, yeah. yep. You set the settings before the game even starts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like maybe there was something. Unity. Hey, listen. <laughs> Let's take not be too back, hasty. Babe. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I was wrong. <laughs> what happened to Unity stock this week, man? It, same I thing don't know, but it every, tanked. <laughs> same, dude, same thing that happened to everyone's stock. People realize that, hey, these valuations are just made up numbers. Mm. Oh, may, maybe they're not as high as we made them up to be. I don't know. That was kind of shocking. All right. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I did some reading into it. Uh, Armadillos is a game. Jordan, Armadillos. Michael, Mr. Alert, Jill. They jump in and play. And Jordan, what is it? Uh, game it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a board game. Uh, there's a number of win conditions. It's four players. Um, yeah, and you're kind of, you're sometimes you work together, sometimes you work against each other. Um, yeah, with, without without going too deep into it, that's the that's the gist of the board game. Right. Uh, so yeah, but uh, there's been an issue because I noticed that I think the last two times Jordan was going to stream on a Thursday and like, hey, let's do some multiplayer. And you know, I watch stuff like this. It's not really my jam, but I can find some entertainment in it. And because Jordan does some spectacular in-game tricks to lose, yes. Some, yeah. <laughs> Snatch, <laughs> snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. They'll be like, "There's no way you can lose." And be like, "Oh, child, sit down, and just watch." <laughs> you haven't seen my final form see, yet. See the master at work here. <laughs> we amateur. Um, but you weren't you weren't able to get into online like that. It's been a long time too. Like yeah, the beginning they, of the year. They they announced that they were going to be doing some network maintenance. Yeah, and they said, "Oh, it's going to be like a month," and you know, a month passed. And lo and behold, no updates. Um, hell, even even trying to get in via the the Proton version was a little was a little screwy for a while. It was a little uh, dicey, and you know, like this was getting like in January, and uh, it's like nothing has really happened. Uh, they were doing a crossplay update because um, their provider, like halfway through this uh, transition, like by the way, we don't support Linux and OS X anymore. YOLO. Oh. Right. Um, so, like on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Mac OS, and Linux, uh, forming parties, private, private games. multiplayer games, <laughs> currently unavailable. They've just been gone. <laughs> Scorched turf. The problem with that is the cardinal sin of they've just been completely radio silent about this. Mm-hmm. 
I'm like, la, 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 la. And yeah, maybe they've been busy, but like, just not, no real communication. But no longer, everyone. If you're a fan of the Armadillo, the Dragon Clan, uh, there's an update. The studio behind Armello uh, has, uh, they're really sorry. And they promise regular updates from now on. Now, this has nothing, and I repeat, nothing to do about the two new games that are nearing release. And they don't want that to get reviewed. No, just get that out of your mind right now. This don't don't sudden, don't review Bombas, please. Yeah, this this <laughs> don't th- point out that we've completely fucked our previous months games. long <laughs> break in communication was a fuck mothering accident. Okay, <laughs> we're back. We're good. Also, we got two new titles we're working on. Just letting you know. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, the Linux version, Linux build, they've already submitted uh, to Steam. This is going to be swapped out with Proton. No. That is that. We're giving it's, up on the Linux version, and uh, well, the Steam Deck is just going to default to Proton. That's yeah, great. I mean, I mean that that's that's the perils when you uh, when you contract out your uh, multiplayer service. You're kind of at the whims of if they support stuff or not, regardless of whether or not you want to. I would say that that multiplayer service in particular should probably stop getting business if they're going to start mm-hmm. making changes that drop swaths of customers randomly that seems kind of and it's not just macro linux because yes macro linux compared to windows for gaming it's a tiny share yeah Yeah, it's the switch it's the playstation it's the xbox what the hell are you doing (laughs) listen okay pedro i'll have you know that this development they had coupons all right so (laughs) Yeah, buy one multiplayer, get one free. <laughs> they yeah. just got to stuck with the deal, you know. They just, what you, I don't know what's what exactly is going on. Um, and I, Jordan's question about this earlier on Discord is like, who the hell are they? Who are these people? Seriously, I I, I'm kind of curious to know. Now. Yeah, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently there's some Australian ISP or company that does this. Okay, so I need Mr. Fox Dog to go do some stuff. Uh, I'll, 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 send, I'll send you some. I'll send you a message later. The the need. For cross-platform multiplayer is going to be increasing, not decreasing. So those are skills that if you work on a team that does stuff like this, that you would like to develop to make yourself more marketable. Yes. Keep that in mind. Right. Um, Unless the Steam Deck was a fluke, man. Probably. Judging by the way that it's selling? uh, Nope. (laughs) I'm happy to everybody who got one. Uh, Did you see the thing I posted in Discord earlier this week? Uh, The poor guy in uh, Spain. Oh, yeah. Snap. Yeah. (laughs) That box was like... It is like they took it out in the middle and they just practice elbow drops on it. Oh, yeah. They they smacked the Undertaker on the back of the head with that fucker before they dropped it in the guy's door, right? Laid it on the road and then drove the truck across the box right yeah. and so let's see if we can skip a steam deck <laughs> ah and in north america they're being shipped with fedex which you know fedex is like what's their slogan they're like not dhl <laughs> and that's it. We're, 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 we're more expensive than ups uh I was just happy it wasn't um, DPD, but that box, the box that mine arrived in, it looked like someone had put something very heavy on it. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad people are getting them, and more likely than not, um, it'll be in one piece, because, like, this is, the whole point of the Steam Deck thing is, like, that thing is, that case is not thin. No, yeah, like, that. No, it isn't. It, it, yeah, this no, that, that, that... is a... Chonky boy. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that 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 was that was the good ass smack. That was yeah. It's like someone deliberately was twisting it, or yeah, just yeah, no, no, over their heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if if you're getting attacked by John Cena and all you have is a box <laughs> with uh with with a Steam Deck in it, you got you got to swing for the head, right? Mm. Such as that. All right, we got to bounce out here. Yeah, coming up next, open source Nvidia. <sighs> it's more likely than you think. Ah, Team Blue. I don't know. I I was thinking in my head what kind of sound. (laughs) What kind of sound you'd listen if you had an entire uh, herd of news? Welcome to the source code, baby. (laughs) Uh, It's it's just Stallman. Non-stop Stallman lectures. (laughs) I'd like to. I'd Uh, like to. Stallman's version of the free software song, which is. Clearly not as good, but yeah, uh, we will get to the news. Don't you worry. We do need to thank um, some people, but first we need to tell everyone else how uh, they 
uh, Ken 2 uh, be on the uh, thanking list? What, what if they want for- a Ken 3? <laughs> Well, they, they, they need a toucan first. They got to fall their ass. Pants off your head, Pedro. <laughs> Caw. Caw. Oh, I, th- I, I thought uh, you were finishing that sentence. I just took my pants off. If you want to pay me to pe- put my pants back on, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. That's it. You can select a level uh, at $100. I will put my pants back on, but you can get some <laughs> cool stuff for uh, the lower tiers. Uh, you can back. You can get access. Hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, you can you can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get to by subbing to us on Twitch. Twitch. We don't have a hundred dollar level. Slash. We should add one. Where I put my pants back. On. We have a half. Sounds like level. a missed opportunity. <laughs> Sounds like a missed opportunity because right now I'm easy breezy beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, Discord. Uh, you can get access to the show notes level at our Death Note level. You get your name in the credits. Uh, if you're an executive producer, you get at the top of the credits. Uh, if you, yeah. Uh, you can buy your way onto the show. Uh, you get early access to a bunch of the videos that Ven is putting out. You're going to get to see the NetJack video before everyone else. Hey, man, I got to tell you right now, part of that Discord, you get like uh, early, early access because Ven's lazy sometimes. And Ven also gets busy and doesn't have time to set everything up in um, Patreon. But we have an announcement channel in Discord. Mm. All that shit gets dropped in there. I'm like, there it is. Vultures. Have fun. And it's your time to watch something like that because if you get a well actually stored up, I want to hear it. <laughs> I want it. Yes. Give it to me. Let me we know about a, it. We got a store as well. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can cover your filthy peasant body in all of the glorious LGC merch. We got t-shirts. We got stickers. Do we we got pants? coffee cups. The we stickers have, may be did, slightly did, toxic. Just be careful. With that. Don't, 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 don't lick them. Uh, did, did we get the booty shorts? I don't think we did get the booty shorts Not one yet. day. One day. But you, you can know get what? Stickers. You could probably you wear the hoodie like as pants if you were creative with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it comes with its own poopy hole. That's great. Ah, then you can uh, put your pants on one nipple at a time, right? <laughs> I, I, I just, I just go both nipples in at once because I'm, I'm, I'm crazy like that. I'm a mad lad. We got, we got wish zones as well. Uh, if you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Pedro has one. Ven has one. Jill has one. If you buy Ven some stuff off of his, you get your name in lights behind his head. It's crazy, or at least in fluorescent markers illuminated fluorescent markers i don't know okay see i i want to we need to do some like creative writing from the um wish wish zones because i'm looking at yours and like how does my story begin okay what do i have to work with plot devices uh webcam (laughs) and a punching bag i mean you can scroll down there's there's more fuel there I don't know. I, listen, this is my pilot episode, man. So I don't want to overload right. everyone. You know. Yeah, it's it's only only bags. Subscribe and to my only punches. Pedro would be air filters and. <laughs> I mean, that's a bad name. <laughs> air filters and lock. It's is, clearly is, a is, is, Isn't that Tom DeLonge's project after he left Blink One Eighty Two? That is one hundred percent a rom com. <laughs> air filters and lockpicks. Yeah. And I would be. Processors and audio so interfaces. Audio. That I, I mean, I mean, that, 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 that's, that, that's just straight up Venstone, right? Like, that's fucking that, hard mode right there, man. Yeah. Um, hey, we got somebody to think because you know what? I got one of these. Ooh. This is what yes. we got to mention. This is the worst decision thing? we've ever made. But, you know, <laughs> we're pretty good at banking bad decisions and we stick to them. <laughs> Ten years later? Right, a decade later, man. <laughs> Not really. I mean, uh, what are we thinking about? So, yeah, if you pick up anything from our wish zone, this is like an extra bonus soda for us, uh, especially if you get anything for the studio, you can send a message. It says a gift for you. Dramatic reading. Hi, Vin. Pedro. I'm reading this verbatim. And the other one. <laughs> And the other one. The ugly yeah. one. What's her face? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Whatever. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fine being what's her face. It's fine. Go on. Um, here's your newfangled blinky coolotron for Thread Pooper. Oh, and tell Frank. Frank. <laughs> Hang on. We got to get the right effect for this. Frank. <laughs> Frank owes me money. For the cal- my calcium morning pills. <laughs> God damn it, Frank, again. <laughs> I'm going to go bankrupt uh, with hate from our theorem. Yay! <laughs> A dramatic reading by Vestem. Um, thank you for attending my TEDx, uh, but I will not be answering questions. <laughs> no on course. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so check this out. Thread right. rippers. 
we got the Red Rivers <laughs> their thing when they first came out. You could only water cool them. Then I waited because I'm like, you know what? You remember when Thread Rivers were first launched? They were sold as like gaming, extreme gaming mm-hmm. PCs. And like, that mm-hmm. is dumb. This is why I have like blinky <laughs> RGB shit on my motherboard. Fortunately, it's just off by default. But all the air coolers, uh, they didn't exist at the time. And uh, the water coolers all had blinky bullshit on them. I'm like, nope, pass. And I waited for the Noctua. Then we stuck everything together. But I got the 3060. And we've been over this on previous episode. Uh, that doesn't have a backplate on it because I bought the most basic bitch one they had. And it kind of touches the uh, Noctua heatsink. And I kind of might just have a little sheet of nylon that I've uh, wedged in there. And it <laughs> might possibly just short out at any fucking moment. <laughs> so uh, Arthur and so that. And yeah, that was something I was thinking about buying. Because let's be honest, it hasn't shorted out yet because nobody wants to install an AIO. But Arthur and I would like to reach out and shake your hand so you'll be partially defenseless when I boop you on the back of the head because this is going to be a motherfucker too. But <laughs> It's heavy. It is. It's a fucking threat for AIO, baby. <laughs> Ooh, three fat. That's Ooh. a 360. That's a big one. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, yeah. That's big uh, chunk. It's 120s. And look, the fans don't blink though. The fans it, don't it, it has pink <laughs> LEDs. <laughs> it's just the pump that blinks. <laughs> pump it up. Uh, pump up the jams. Yeah, this is the Master Liquid ML360 Mirror TR4 edition. So it's got the full coverage on the plate. And yeah, this is the one I could find that the least shouty one. <laughs> Wanting to put that off as long as possible, but apparently our theory had different thoughts on that. <laughs> so I thank you for that. That that's Sunday afternoon taken care of. And um I don't look forward to doing that at fucking all, man. <laughs> but hey, look on the bright side, Arthur, it didn't fall on my foot, which is yet. awesome. Shut up. <laughs> you haven't kicked it yet either, have you? Oh no. I'm gonna like wake up in the fucking like Somehow it's in the wall, yeah, just, no, no, floating just like crawl, it's above your head, up a little like, bit on the bed, and it's blinking <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's a requiem for a dream shit where, like, yeah. the box just like twists open, and the AIO just like falls on your head. Oh man! Uh, so yeah, that that's a thing. Thank you because that's like legitimate. Like, I'm kind of like you, mainly because we got like I got a 1920X, dude. I, I can replace that cheap because apparently I bought the um like. What was there? Was there a 1900? Yeah, there was an eight core thread ripper. Believe that or not. Yeah, but why? why? The, the first gen uh, <laughs> yeah. had an eight core one. <laughs> they, they, they had an eight core like AM, uh, AM four parts. So like, mm. why? Why? <laughs> why? So, moral of the story, everybody. Everyone think Kandalf the crate, which is our theorem. And um, if anything goes wrong from now on in our broadcasting rig, his fault. It's, yep. Yep. <laughs> just good, good, good old leaky Arthur, and they called him <laughs> drip, drip, blink, bitch. Um, you want to get into a little bit of uh, news, what everyone's really yeah, tuning spe- in for? Spe- speaking of cooling, uh, you know, hell, hell seems to have gotten some new IOs, have, haven't they? Uh, yeah, we got, to got real cool thing. all of a sudden. <laughs> this little, little, just quick mention of uh, a little upstart NVIDIA, uh, they've released open source GPU kernel modules. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> the big story of the week. Ish. <laughs> the week. Um, wrong segment. <laughs> so what do we got to think about this? Uh, only Turing and Yor are currently supported. Ooh. And, you know, there are plans to work on an upstream approach with the Linux kernel community and partners such as Canonical, Red Hat, and Suzy. So all that's being talked about and worked on. This is not upstream and all. Upstreamable at its current form. Just not. Not going to happen. Now, my first thought, I think I'm not alone with this was the, everyone remembers the lapsus. Yeah. Lapsus. And you know, they had their like, Oh, and one other thing, like <laughs> one more demand. Thing. Right. And they're like <laughs> open source your drive. What did they say? Uh, after evaluating our position in NVIDIA, we decided to add one more requirement. We request that NVIDIA commits to completely open source and distribute under a FOSS license, the GPU drivers for windows, Mac OS and Linux and now and forever. Um, if this they request don't provide is Mac not OS drivers anymore. on Friday, we will release uh, the complete silicon graphics and computer chipset files for all Which, recent NVIDIA GPUs. I just had to finish what I wrote. I'm sorry. They didn't. They did. They didn't end up doing that though. They released no. some stuff. Yeah, but and it, it wasn't not within a month. 
Yeah, that didn't get us open source drivers. <laughs> that got us to another NVIDIA story later this afternoon. <laughs> so uh, according to reports, GameScope kind of works now, allegedly. Uh, the Here's the one thing that I was sad about. Like, legit, because immediately after this, because uh, some of y'all motherfuckers got like part of your identity is like hating on NVIDIA, not having open source <laughs> drivers. And you were hurt. Like you were lashing out because the not good enough crowd showed right the fuck up. Like this isn't good enough. This is, we need more. It has firmware. Like no one fucking open source of firmware, but firmware. See, I can keep this. But you know, in all fairness, uh, even Hector, Hector had a point. He said Nvidia released air quotes their kernel drivers open source uh, first step. By which they mean they moved uh, most of it to firmware and made the open source driver call to it. There are almost 900 functions implemented in the 34 megabyte firmware, give or take, from what I can see. Now, to that, uh, I'm just going to say, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. <laughs> I had, again, that's, how is that any different from what uh, the AMD drivers are doing? Because well, there, you there, can, there's you a can, blob in the kernel. Exactly. Uh, well, you can <laughs> not, ship not. firmware on <laughs> Linux because, like, yeah. I right out of the tree, my HDSP 9632, the format converter I'm using right now for this show, it's a fucking brick when you plug it in. You have to get the ELSA firmware to load in the damn thing to wake it up. And you now NVIDIA can be like, yeah, just shove the firmware right up the pooper. And Yeah. And, yeah. and th- I mean, eventually this may open up the door for a uh, more advanced Nouveau driver, but uh, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I'm, I'm kind of square in the middle of this. Yes, it's a good thing that they open source the, the, what is essentially the shim portion of their mm-hmm. driver um, so that it can be upstream, upstreamed, but upstreamed. I mean, upstream yeah <laughs> much of the, because much of the functionality is going to be in blobs it's still going to be a black box the the main advantage of having the majority of the amd drivers be open source because there are still blobs but most of that code is not in the blobs uh there are a shit ton of auto generated include files as hector points out in his twitter thread um and somehow that that giant mess of spaghetti spaghetti code made it into the kernel so this is how nvidia gets around that um, but like, yeah, the real, the real target of this is going to be like server and HPC, because if you're going to be deploying and, thousands of machines at a time, yeah, pushing out run files and RPMs is not ideal. You kind of just want to have that baked into the image, yeah. ready to go. If you need to upgrade a driver, Hey, floop out the firmware and your, your gravy. Um, but uh, I mean, Jordan, look at, look at the positive side. We'll finally be able to go back and use this as a stepping block for all the older cards from NVIDIA, right? No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, pa- right. Yeah. Uh, tur- tur- turing it up. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, like, like you said, it's a step in the right direction. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, Hey, we should all be sucking NVIDIA's dick for doing the, for doing something that frankly they should have done a while ago. Um, but Hey, like, yeah. Uh, we'll t- take it take it for what it is it's yeah, not the I greatest do think, thing in the world like, but it's this not the worst is in thing response in the world to um like because intel's allegedly when they get this thing pushed out it's going to be full snack and the server side with a motherboard cpu and mm-hmm. compute like yep. boom just drop it in nope you don't need to go around no special sauce in there just load it up you can do it right out of the box deploy 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 fuckos Never unless it's a 12th gen processor Th- those don't do the thing they're supposed to do on Linux yet because Intel didn't think. To <laughs> I don't think they have that in the Xeon format. Probably not. Uh, no, the, I think the Xeons are all uh, P cores as they were. But uh, yeah, no, the, Nvidia does say that if you're using a for an enterprise environment or any kind of uh, GPU compute. These drivers, these open source drivers are stable, but if you're using it with a GeForce card or a Titan card, uh, then this is alpha. You should be uh, expecting alpha quality out of these drivers because the, it, it, it's a test effectively. And yes, like Jordan said, it, this is just the modules that talk to the kernel effectively because... Much like the AMD drivers, it is uh, the the actual proprietary stuff that talks between the kernel and the hardware itself is still very much closed source. And I see the, I very much see the improvement 
right now uh, to especially the packaging because having to kill the X server in to install the uh, binary drivers in 2022 is beyond stupid. Um, so yeah, I want to see distros actually package this in a form that I can just load whichever proprietary blob that I want. And I don't want the excuses like the graphics driver PPA is like, oh, we don't have the stable, uh, we only have the stable version. We don't have any betas. We don't have any Vulkan drivers. We don't have any of that. I want the option to just switch between whichever blob I want without having to build new kernel modules every single time. Please. <laughs> okay, that, that's it. Because how many times, I, you guys might do it, but you know, I tend to build, I'm the person that builds kernels for fucking fun. Uh, but you'll run into having to wait on the kernel drivers from NVIDIA because they're closed source to add support for kernel X. And sometimes that can mm -hmm. be a month. That's going away. That's fucking neat by itself. Yeah, I know that that'll be able to be maintained in a more upstream manner, which is which is good. Yeah, there, there's like there's definite positives, but it's not like yub yub the Death Star has blown up, everything's all happy go lucky now, right? There's there's still there's still going to be some problems. Um, Nv Nvidia still isn't committing to this fully uh, in terms of like vis-a-vis -vis open source code, but it's it's something, right? And you know you can you can if you want to consume this driver you can uh the the driver that was open source is released the 515 beta. beta yes <laughs> um i installed it i'm running it right now nothing has eaten shit uh we wow. do finally get vx vk ext image drm format modifier that extension that game scope uses oh. i tried to i tried to build a fresh copy of game scope could not get that up and running i'm sure there's something i'm doing wrong i spent 15 minutes so i need to dig into it a little bit more also if you want to turn on the game scope stuff remember to check your etsy mob probe d file for uh directory for an nvidia file the dot run file that the uh, cr uh, creates a blacklist file that also sets DRM.modeset set equals to zero. You're going to need to flip that to one in order for mode setting. To yeah, you need mode setting for kernel. that to work. No, I genuinely <laughs> yeah. hope NVIDIA, whatever you do, do not open source your um, config GUI config because I don't want anyone taking away my CRT. <laughs> Got, yeah, lock, lock that in place. Uh, the the uh, the other thing that they did here, which is kind of nice, uh, they deprecated the warning for ignore CC mismatch. You may have run into it when you've run a kernel update and your uh, GCC hasn't been fully upgraded to a the next minor version. And it'll say, hey, you know, you're running, you built, you have your kernel built with this version of GCC, modules built with this ver version of GCC. You might have a problem. Uh, there's a disable to over, there's a environment variable to override that. Now, because you know we live in the fucking future and come. Compiler minor versions aren't going to completely break your system like they did in the nineties. We it, it's it, it's it's kind of just ignored. You can run your uh, your mismatched uh, ABI versions. Here's something I'd like to fine. see. I would like to see a uh, dash dash uh, for compiling that. I want a flag that it just says trust me in this one that lets me just out of the box without having to do set envi environment commands to build a, against a full RT kernel, full RT patch. <laughs> It's like, shut up and do it, please. <laughs> it's like, trust me, I'm at this point. I know what I'm doing. And by the way, NVIDIA, we both know it fucking works. So, yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess that's the other, that's the other pro thing about uh, the open source kernel is event or open source kernel driver is eventually, yeah, maybe the RT shit will be upstream. That'll, uh, that'll just work. Well, I maybe. mean, it, it does work. 100%. It absolutely works. But there's like two moon glyph steps that is undocumented to get the damn thing to work. So, um, and like, yeah, I, I want that to be because you don't deal with that with AMD shit. And uh, yeah, you yeah. just fucking play. So the moral of the story, everybody, buy an Intel card when it comes out. So, <laughs> well, or yeah, the, yeah, you know, in, in five thousand years when they finally release billions something. of years, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when when you're seventy years old and uh, you're getting back into like retro gaming, gaming, yeah. Well, like you that. know, ho 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 I had to back in the day. Let me check to, that closet. To, to, to <laughs> oh no, here we go, here we go. They're gonna make retro mining PCs. <laughs> Vintage mining. Oh, we're pieces. going to mine the retro internet. Yes, uh, retro, 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 retro coins. You know, right. pe people just doing Bitcoin for fun. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Yes. So as you may remember, starting with the 3060, NVIDIA was like, oh, we're going to make a low hash rate version of our GPUs, and it's going to be unhackable. The very same day that the 3060 came out, they released a driver, which effectively made that entire point moot because it bypass the whole LHR limitation. Now, uh, as it turns out, someone, uh, <laughs> a bunch of clever folks who unfortunately are tied to um, 
mining, uh, decided, you know what, let's just implement that. Uh, what's the name of the... Um, let's see. They had a bunch of them. It's like um, NB Miner and Quick Miner. Uh, the new versions completely circumvent the LHR, uh, and instead of your cards just mining at 20 or 30% of the speed that they should be able to, they're mining at 100%. It only works on Windows, uh, so if you're Saving mining... Saving grace right there, right? Yeah, uh, if you're mining on Linux or you have your own custom platform built. Imagine being a poor miner <laughs> having to buy all those Windows licenses. <laughs> Uh, you, you, yeah, they're just they're, they're yeah they're they're buying Windows licenses. I, I believe that. Yeah, I mean they're upstanding people. Pillars of the community. <laughs> But yeah, it is. Uh, those don't work on uh, Linux yet. You're, the uh, LHR limitation is still a thing if you're using Linux. But on Windows, yeah, that that that's gone. So the, if you bought one of the new 3080s or the new 3080 Ti's, which after the revision were supposed to come with uh, LHR, well, tough. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think we had a good run for as long as it was. I mean, yeah, this is. You, everyone knew this was coming. No one said this is impossible. <laughs> oh yeah! And when you have the oh. amount of money that miners <laughs> are throwing around, uh, it was going to. It happen. was just Nvidia going. It is unhackable. It's a thing between the driver and the firmware and the GPU. It's like, come on. Well, really? I feel like I, walking up I'm, to Pedro, like Homer Simpson, like you mean Nvidia's marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that this. This actually came from that NVIDIA leak, or at least some insight into it, as opposed to, like, whatever this company was showed up and like, hey, do you work at NVIDIA? Yeah. Do you want to be, I don't know, a multimillionaire and just do this one thing for us? Why? Because here's, here's multimillion dollars. Here's, here's, <laughs> here's the dump truck of money. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no questions asked. Just, <laughs> just accidentally right. release the yeah. driver. There you yeah, go. Yeah, just, 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 drop a, Why just drop a, drop a flash drive. On on the street, <laughs> just just leave it there. Someone will pick it up. Yeah, no. Call, nice calling hatch. LHR right. a <laughs> yeah, uh, calling LHR a band-aid solution was an optimistic tape from from the get go. Yeah, like I, I'm genuinely surprised. Like it lasted this long. It's, yeah, like Ven said, it's it's been a good ride, and now GPU prices are going way back up again. So not, it's not right like, now. No, I don't know why they are because yet. crypto is just <laughs> yeah. right now across the board. And they're you know they're actually yeah. talking about doing the game bundles with the GPUs again, because guess what? Ain't nobody fucking buying that shit at that price. Mm. <laughs> yep. Might as well get it. What, what's you gotta, gotta throw a couple of games. I mean, there's power supplies. So they, they need a home, Pedro. <laughs> yes, exploding power supplies. Isn't that right, Newegg? All uh, right. So this is not a repeat from 2001, ladies and gentlemen. No! <laughs> as Let's it turns out. Warp. This one is um, is actually brand new. Some uh, endeavorous people in uh, uh, in the 4chan boards found uh, some of the unreleased original uh, Duke Nukem Forever bits and decided to put it together. Uh, you can actually download the thing and maybe get it to run with uh, is it Eduke 32 or there's something. Uh, I couldn't actually get it to run because it doesn't work with the Linux version, I think. But yeah, you can see the content that was made for that first version of Duke Nukem Forever that was shown at uh, E3 2009? Something like that. You know what? This, yeah. you know, it's amazing. 2001. One of the things <laughs> we got to think about and we got to <laughs> talk about is how little of this game actually exists. Um, mm -hmm. And not from like, oh, it was an incomplete leak. No. This it's is, a 40 megabyte download yeah <laughs> this is all they managed to do and this was confirmed this was confirmed uh by uh, yeah, the truth about dnf hashtag go ahead jordan what you got a, a, a poogie, a poogie. Yeah, i was going to do that yeah <laughs> uh, thank you uh, <laughs> so yeah 3d realms this is the game that killed it and uh who is it who's he was he uh scott miller founder of a poogie came out and wrote he's like yeah like he, he was this short of saying this was a money laundering scheme. I'll let, I, I'm just making that up for comedic effect. Fuck off. But yeah, they spent over a decade and they just a little tiny little bit of a game, like barely a tech demo done on Unreal Engine 1. And um, that's, that's yeah. just sad, man. The, at least the editor works, allegedly. Supposedly, this is going to be leaking in uh, like to get all the bits for it so you can play around with the home game the full uh, in June, according to the report. I'm yep. like for historical reasons. A, I'm interested. B, 
I look forward to the when the internet finishes it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's gonna that's gonna be a big one too. <laughs> and like re- re- reading uh, the the blog post on Apuginet, um, Apugint, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, there was it was basically every time they, a new like graphics technology came out, they basically stopped development of the game and started from scratch mm-hmm. and they were just constantly chasing their tail. So the fact that this is like a 40 megabyte download and that's all they made, that doesn't, that doesn't surprise me given, given the context at all. Like how many times did they make that? Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. And reading the blog post that he made, it's like, wait, so you were in a, a leadership position back then and this was happening, happening under your watch. Do you realize how damning my private Island can't hear you. La 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 la. <laughs> It's like, do you realize how damning it is, uh, all of the admissions that you're making in this particular blog post? Just saying. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck. I mean, he, he finishes. He says, uh, I hope that Gearbox can resurrect Duke Nukem. We'll call it uh, Tiny Nukem's Wonderland. And uh, yeah. No. Well, well, uh, the well, only well, thing that Gearbox we'll did for Hook, Duke Nukem, Nukem was remove the uh, original Atomic Edition, remove the Linux version. That That's all yeah. they did. Yeah, I, I think we should make our new game called Kook Mukum. <laughs> it's, 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 one, it's one less than Duke Mukum. I'm still a little irritated that it took so long for uh, Valve to come around and um, add their anti-cheat to Proton so I could play that fucking Duke Nukem forever. Mm. And uh, yeah, like I got 30 minutes into that game. I'm like, wow, somebody slapped a label on this and pushed it up. But hey, something that's not minimum viable product is a uh, heroic game launcher yeah they got a new version out version 230 aka brook uh, and they have uh themes uh they don't have a bonnie tyler theme but they have support for dracula like hawaiian you, or yep yeah, uh dracula which you actually talked about with jill on weekly daily wednesday a couple months ago actually um yeah dracula, uh, dracula that fucking uh, purple ass theme green green theme blue theme <laughs> but, but a, bu- a bunch of them ab- old ab- theme new theme yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, there's a platform selection thing as well uh, when it comes That's to... That's nice, uh, Jordan. We're just all secretly judging everybody's games collection on this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where are you from? Huh? Where are you? Uh, let's Amnesia, see. Oh, Amnesia, no, they, they actually Sonic, bought some Cyberpunk? Epic games because a few of those have not been in the free ones yet. Like I did not know that Axiom Verge had a sequel. I learned something tonight. Yeah, uh, I think Ethan was talking about that a while ago. I all don't... Right. Yeah, um, but yeah, they, they have uh, they added auto updated. They added pat- platform selection when it comes to uh, uh, installing games from GOG. If you want to get the Linux version off of them, uh, they have some accessibility options as well. The ability to hide and favorite games, and uh, now the install when you install games through Heroic, it'll show you how much space that uh, the game is going to nom up so that you don't accidentally fill up your drives, which is always good. Yeah, it's very I mean, nice. I really like that they've added the feature that Steam has and has had for a while. It, you know, if you turns out that even though there's a native Linux version of it, but you want to play the Windows version for you know performance reasons for or whatever, purposes. yeah, something like that. There's now an option for that. Plus accessibility, <laughs> you can zoom. It's yeah, it, even with the, the uh, Dracula theme. Yeah. Burn through the witches. Twenty sixty four. What the fuck's that? No, it was, it was uh, it's a cyberpunk game. Uh, okay. Is it a visual yeah. novel type of situation? Because it I looks think, like a visual novel so. type of situation. <laughs> I do see Amnesia Machine for Pigs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. M- machine, machine, broken machine for pigs. Oh, man. But, <laughs> that was the Chinese room really wanted to make an Amnesia game. Hey, it was good until that third act. Like, almost, you almost fucking landed it until the pigs AI started flipping out and you really got to see them and, like, you. Come on! Yep. I'm so too scared of that. Nah. Uh, and 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 then and then the speed run where you just realize you can walk through one of the walls right to the exit. Most likely, yes. there is that. But <laughs> pro game launchers could really come pretty far, like really. Yeah, quick. yeah, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. actually doing both Epic and GOG in the one thing uh, without you know, unless you want Lutris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's actually looking like a proper fucking application. Like, there's yeah. it's not the 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 programmer or the default theming. I'm yeah, it's 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 getting a lot of polish, and that's a good thing. Espe- especially, and I guess part part of it is because it's getting a lot of use on Windows as well. Considering there's no Epic Games client on Windows, this is kind of your only option. Oh man, that that's gonna be a weird future. Like where you're gonna have to run Wine on your Linux Box Nine Thousand to well, run. So much cool tech just starts in Linux as a way to get shit running, and then they're like, and then the Windows users are like, "We want that Mango HUD, <laughs> FSR everywhere. What you FSR can do that? All the things, baby. 
All right. Coming up next, uh, I'm going to take a walk outside in space and breathe some vacuum. Engage! It's time for the chairquisition number one. This time we're... Uh, well, I'm, I'm too distracted by my Picard impre- my bad Picard impression. <laughs> uh, welcome to the chairquisition. This, uh, this is where we take a game, we run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions on a bunch of different hardware, and then we give you our our galactic score based on our that divinely like inspired lawn. Yeah. It's stinky rose. Stinky rose. Uh, based, on, <laughs> based on lawn chairs. One chair means it's great. Or four, one chair means that it's trash. Four chairs means that it's great. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Trigon, a space story developed by Senor.tech. Uh, you can pick it up for uh, 1999. It's done on the unity, unity engine. What is it? Trigon space story sees you take command of your own very own spaceship, carry out track tactical battles, defend your vessel against space pirates and escape from enemy territory on your voyages. You'll face a slew of tricky decisions in your quest to uncover the mystery of the galaxy. So we got to do some disclosure. Uh, the dev sent us three keys. I had actually bought my copy beforehand, so I'm giving you my full un- uncensored opinion. Unlike these bought out shills, uh, so I guess I'll get in. I'll get into it on Fedora 35 64 bit with the R9 3900 X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it launches out of the box. Holds 100 holds 180 plus frames a second at 1080p. Runs runs a little bit of poo for me at uh, uh, UHD on the old 1080 Ti. Uh, graphically, yeah, there's some pretty space backgrounds. There's some 3D art. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know. The expanse kind of ruined me with the vertically stacked ships. Seeing everything standing on a long, flat, horizontal plane seems wrong now. I want, I want my hard sci-fi, damn it. Uh, music straight up reminds me of Beast Wars, which is not a bad thing. Uh, fun-wise, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's a lot harder than FDL. Part of that is because of the new systems that Trigon introduces. Now you have to worry about hunger, morale, a captain who takes his run and goes to hell when he dies. Not to mention upgrades are now split across two currencies. Scrap, which you can use to upgrade or heal yourself, or credits, which you can use to bribe people or... Uh, buy stuff at, at space stations. The key dif- There's a key difference there because it means you can't upgrade stuff as quickly as you want. You might want to save your scrap for upgrading your weapons, but if there isn't a space station in sight, you might need to heal yourself. And credits, well, you can use them to buy stuff, but it also unlocks or it locks dialogue options if you don't have enough. Um, your crew can also level up, gets new abilities. Cool. And I think that's cool because the upper end stuff gives you access to some of the more broken species abilities like an FDL, like free power or like free upgrades for systems for like specialized engineers and stuff. I thought that was a really neat way to like make everyone kind of unique. Um, I managed to complete the second quest given me so far, but I was so low health that I got blowed up by the third quest mini box. So I'm going to give you some tips I found for staying alive that I found semi helpful. Target uh, oxygen, shields, helm, and weapons in that order because the enemy AI prioritizes oxygen over all other systems. Uh, Not so useful when you're fighting all robot crews, but still useful. Uh, Don't bother upgrading your shields at first. Level 2 shields in FTL can basically get you through most of the game aside from the last section. Level 2 shields in Trigon gives you 10 extra seconds of safety. Uh, If you can get 2 plus plasma turrets or any sort of like laser weapon, you're golden. It's just the whole laser strategy from FTL. So, end of the day... I liked it. It has FTL's bones, but it's a very, very different beast. Some of the changes to the base formula are pretty neat. Some seem a little unnecessary. I like it. I'm going to give it three chairs. What do you think, Pedro? Under three minutes. Uh, yeah, see, I, I I didn't like FTL quite as much as you did, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X uh, and the GTX 1080, uh, originally I actually thought that it didn't support anything above 60, but then both Ven and Jordan's like, yeah, yeah, it does. Like, All right, I'll go back into the game and try to figure out what I was doing wrong. Turns out nothing. You just have to quit the game uh, and restart it to see the actual change in the FPS limitation. So, okay. Uh, It can actually hold, uh, if I set it to very low, 2560 by 1440, it actually holds 144 verbs. So, all right, good enough. On Ultra, I could only get it to like 70 or 80. On the uh, on the Steam Deck, it holds 60. Uh, on the high preset, above that, it has problems maintaining 60, even at the 1280 by 800. So clearly the, those uh, particle effects, which seems to be the only thing that changes between the different uh, graphical settings, those um, have some impact on the performance. But um, the, the the music, though, I, I'll i be nice and say that it was unintrusive. I, I, 
<laughs> you could put a gun to my head and ask me to describe the music that was in the game and I, and it's like, I don't know I don't remember so yes it clearly was so unintrusive that I can't even remember that it was there but as for the fun like I said I, I don't like FTL as much as Jordan but I liked what it did and Trigon wants to be FTL, FTL and expand on it which is not a problem, you know, conceptually, that's exactly what you want to do. The FTL already exists, so you want to be more, or you want to take that platform as a jumping off step to do something slightly different. That's fine. The problem is how completely broken and unbalanced some of the enemy ships are. If you've been watching the video version, uh, when Jordan was doing his bit, two of my crewmates uh, got teleported out of my ship and into the enemies, and then I blew up the enemy ship because I don't have control over the teleporter because my ship doesn't have a teleporter, so I couldn't get my crew members back. So I blow up the ship, and <laughs> my two crewmates are gone. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. But uh, said, the... hold a gun to his head. <laughs> uh, uh, fair enough. So, yeah, it is... It, if they manage to do that to your captain, and then you blow up your captain, it's game over. If this if this happens at the start, that's fine. If you if this happens like an hour into a run, you're gonna be pissed. And FTL, I always found that it was hard, but fair. Trigon, they, that's not fair. And RNGesus will fuck you up the first chance it gets. So uh, two chairs for me. <laughs> oh, chairs. Yeah. How about it you, Ben? <laughs> oh man, let's see if I can do this. Uh, let me reset. Reset. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry to hold that AK-47 to your head. There, baby. You <laughs> what are you talking about? That was an AR-15, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> clearly a bazooka. What are, you what are we, about? newscasters, though? Uh, check <laughs> yes. this out. Ladies and gentlemen, over here in Debbie Love and Len, um, doing pretty good with the 3060 Threadripper 1920X, uh, 32 gigajoules RAM, all that fun stuff. Getting around 103 FURPS at 1080 with everything on YOLO. Good to see that. You know, it's a 1080p gaming card, in my opinion. 30 frames per second to 2160p mediums and uh, about 60 on low. So if you really dial it back, but again, you can't really tell too much of a difference between ultra and not ultra. Not a whole lot in the way of fast moving action going on. So you can probably get away with like 30 FPS. You're going to be good with this uh, playing it on your Steam Deck or anything like that. Windowed and full screen options. Love seeing that. That's brilliant. Rebindable keys. That's the thing. And uh, it's acceptably pretty. You know? It's it's nothing to sneeze at. Now, let's talk about fun, because everyone's thinking it. You've probably already said it in chat. It's FTL. Well, you ever wish that FTL had a survival mode, like a la Metro 2033? <laughs> because, um, yeah, that's kind of what this is. Uh, I, I get that it's part of like a roguelike game, but damn, uh, you die a lot. First game, I was killed while trying to read something. I died. Asteroids killed me while I was trying to read something on screen. Well done. Uh, you know what? My first run might have been RNG. Like, it could have been an RNG pity fuck because I almost lasted 40 minutes in that. I made it to the station, made it to the robot planet, got my little robot buddy. I was cruising around back in the SS because fuck you. That's why I showed up and just like three shot at me and I was done. And this was on easy mode too. Uh, I did two far, far less successful runs and really trying to wrap my head around um, things. But death, she comes quick and swift. I died again. You just keep dying. Pedro, how many times did you die during all your runs? Uh, many, many times. All right. Uh, one, one run I lost like immediately because... So that sounds like a lot. Um, you know what? I learned something though. Learn not to let the captain die because then Blamo, you die too. I got a screenshot in our Discord of that. Uh, this led to saving the captain for last at all costs, then dying. Granted, I was a bit shit. Um, because running around repairing the ships, I wasn't very good at that. That was on me, but, uh, it does have a nice upgrade system that I did notice. You know, you get the scraps and you get the money and you can boop things up, get your weapons upgraded, shill, hull, all that by lottery tickets. Lottery tickets are kind of big right at the beginning of the game. But here's the thing. Trigun never closed the game loop with me. It just didn't click. I um, mean, it managed to piss me off a little bit. This is good in a game. Uh, from my perspective, make me a little bit angry. Make me want to, like, ah, I'm going to show this game that I'm a sentient meat unit. But getting nope so quickly prevented me from being invested or just coming back to it. You know, I did come back to it for testing. I got about 50 minutes into this. But all that said, 
I really feel that the developers made the game that they wanted to make. Uh, they had the foresight to release a demo, so you can taste the nonsense before committing. And, you know, if you like the idea of FTL, but, you know, the grind starts at level zero, might be worth a look. How about that? I'll say two. Uh, don't feel terribly qualified to speak on the topic because I wasn't a massive fan compared to Jordan. Like, if anybody was going to love this game, it was going to be Jordan. Jordan, yeah. you oh, I'll, I'll lived it. FTL for <laughs> a long time, man. I just like all of subset games as games. I I think they're they're a bunch uh, of good I games. I would have preferred Into the Breach. Into the Breach, I, I get that one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I liked FTL. I liked into, I loved Into the Breach. I played a I have like what 300 hours of into the breach on my switch it's it's bad um uh, but hey look on the like right side hours. we made it yep. all the way through the review without calling this the uh, dark souls or ftl it really it, <laughs> the, 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 there's not enough dodge rolling for it to be the dark souls of <laughs> oh, ftl man. yeah no, but, the ship should have a dodge roll button <laughs> yeah i i'm I'm, I'm i'd be interested to see this game like a year from now because they're like Based on the feedback, I hope they go back and rebalance some of the stuff. They are. I'd I was like, looking I'd, at I'd like like the see, latest like, the, update. They were doing yeah. balancing. So, I mean, they might whittle a game. I'm scared. Not scared. A little worried that they're going to nerf the game down. You know, they had the idea, we want this game to be fuck you hard like this. And there's a lot of RNG to this, no matter how good you are. Go back and watch Jordan's Thursday stream. Oh, yeah. No, that was, <laughs> that was, that was getting my shit blown up. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's just fuck stacked against you. I mean, I never get out of like uh, the human category. You got to unlock the other classes. And, yeah. Hmm. I, I, haven't, I haven't even unlocked any of the other guys. And you're like in the 99 percentile of everyone else. So like, fuck, I even tried to kill because I, I got lucky in one of the runs and I ran into a ship that only had two, uh, crew people yeah. and I tried, okay, I'm going to try and kill the crew, but leave the, uh, the ship yeah. intact to see if I unlock the new ship. Couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, the ship it, blew it, up it, before I could kill them. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's it, it's hard to imagine like FDL, but more unforgiving. And mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't know if if you're that kind of person who loves to like build their sandcastle right at the edge of the beast beach, only for like waves, died. waves right. come to like knock it over, only to start again. This game might be for you. I think that was uh, my big thing. I couldn't justify getting for me terribly invested in it because I knew death was the next screen away. Like, yeah, I. Uh, but again, I think I think it's it's that gambling thing, right? It's like how mm. how long can you ride the streak until it runs out? And I, yeah, right. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. Coming up next, we talk about some game demos, and we debate whether gravity is real or not. Gravity I don't falls. think it is. I don't know. If you want to emulate uh, Duran Duran with our vocal cords, you have some work cut out for you. But hey, chances are you have a favorite song. What? Maybe it was even... I don't, I don't know. know. I was just thinking, like, <laughs> maybe I could do that. I've never been able to make like an autotune plug and delete itself. But... <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah if you uh, maybe uh you have a favorite song or you two have created a plugin that self-destructed somehow please do share your story go to linuxgamecast.com hit the contact button there's a form you gotta fill lgc weekly is the show that you want to pick in the topic uh drop box uh there's some caveats at the top kind of want to read them especially if you're trying to send us keys like a uh, person did. Yeah, <laughs> someone actually read the thing at the top, which is very, very you know nice. What? Thank you. <laughs> I got to be honest. Here's the thing: you got it on a second go. Ah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I. Well, you, you know, improvement, right? Hey, hey, no. This tells me that reading comprehension is still alive. Maybe not well, but it is alive. And uh, I, I go through like spam blogs, like once I just happen to be going through it, and I saw like just one hit because you know normally all these spam bots said it knows. If you have hundreds and thousands of, you know, hits on that IP address or that uh, account name. And I saw one. I'm like, what? oh, that's, uh, yeah. And he tried to like put all the links in the first go. I'm like, uh-oh. He figured it out, though. He got it through. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. But before we talk about that, we were talking about demos. Why demos are important. And, you know, the game that we threw chairs at this week had a demo. And I think that is by design from the ground. I'm like... Because oh, yeah. they were going to be dealing with a lot of button. returns, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, this game, you, you need to taste this game. And I think that speaks to more than just, like, super hard specialized niche games, like, uh, you know, FTL Survival Mode. And um, Harriton has written, wrote in, 
finishers. Those feels a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, they say, um, yes, demos for all the games. Also, reviewed game. What is great that runs on the Godot, en- or what's great is that it runs on the Godot engine, so there's a good chance it will still be playable years down the road. What was he talking about again? I'm completely uh, The that. Zelda pot uh, throwing game. Uh, Leela Skyark, there you go. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm, I have Steam open, and I'm like trying to remember, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, no, uh, it yeah. was the Zelda bomb game mechanics game. That, that, that That's all I could remember. Yeah, no, but uh, it, uh, to, to, the, to that point, yeah. Um, dem- demos are good. Yeah, let you let's you try before you buy it. And I don't, I don't know. We're running into this issue right now with Unity games on, on the topic of like Adobe games being able to run forever. Mm-hmm. Unity games are kind of hitting their shelf life right now. We see guys like Armello, uh, their multiplayer service just straight up axed cross platform multiplayer, right? Um, right. These, these Unity ghetto games are getting a lot older and older. They're going to be stuck with screams of nope, which are not going to get them deck verified. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we've. We, Godot, we haven't seen enough Godot games long enough, around long enough, to see if that is actually well, yeah, true. Let's be honest, Godot hasn't been around in a workable state to make a game with long enough to where it's had to deal with the backwards compatibility and how long. Yeah, if, it, if it's exporting like app images, then I mean, sure, that's that's, that's you got a good chance that you'll be able to run that in the future, but it's no guarantee. Yeah, this is true. This is true. But made with Linux, retro indie. Gravity, would you trust independent gravity if the gravity salesman showed up to your house and he's like, listen, we got big corporate gravity. So don't, listen, listen. don't pay any attention. I want you to check out our uh, homegrown uh, first. Our gravity um, has a little source little, organic, little, organic <laughs> gravity. In Retro. Canada, they shut the they shut the gravity off after 9 p.m. anyway. So you know I'd what? be I'd be down for some independent gravity. I think that's responsible. You want to conserve nature's resources, and there's yes. mm-hmm. you don't want to run out of gravity. There's only so you much know, gravity so, on the planet. So, so. <laughs> some sometimes you want a little bit extra though, and it's good to have the option. So indie gravity, there you go. Uh, John, uh, John. And, uh, John is uh, talking. Well, he actually read the thing. And it's like, I'm writing to you about Gravity Ace, an indie gravity shooter about to leave early access. Yes. Uh, gravity Ace is a love letter to classics like Thrust from 1986. Good year. Uh, and Gravadar uh, 1982 with modernized gameplay and graphics. Gameplay focuses on player movement, momentum and gravity. It's like a precision platformer in space. You're retro starting blog. to lose me there. <laughs> Re- yeah, re- retro. Didn't we, didn't we play another game like that recently? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember uh, the name of it either, but uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a powerful level editor. Ah, that's very good. Um, that allows players to play and share their own levels. All 50 levels in Gravity Ace were made with Gravity Ace. Very good. Uh, it's currently in early access with a free demo. Full release on May 26th. That's actually not very far off, so. No, no. All right. <laughs> that's... I so, think it was Gun Tech. That was the one. There's a couple things yes, with this. Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> currently, yeah, there's a demo. Again, that's awesome. Fourteen ninety nine. No multiplayer in this. Let's see. What do we need to run it? Uh, can we get away with the calculator? Two gigs of Two RAM. Two gigs of RAM. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA or Radian <laughs> graphics card. I can run that on ahead. one of Pedro's netbooks. And uh, redeem yeah. some keys. Redeem my key for it. Just to give it a little test drive before the show so I could speak to it. It was you know, a little bit of a little taste. And yeah, it's... Uh, Imagine like, uh, you know, a retro booster type thing, mm-hmm. that type of gameplay, but it's got that level editor in it and they're showing that off right now here. Let me go back to that. That's mm-hmm. pretty damn dope. Um, and you can make something crazy or you got to, you know, save the people on the planets and like gather fuel and stuff like that. But the presentation slick as hell. I was not expecting that. It has done very very well so um it's very smooth the animations yeah. and everything is like very very nice but yeah good <laughs> and good, it, good job even down to you know the ability to make your own levels story dialogue come on like you can you can like do your own <laughs> modules for this and i look forward to the linux scheme cast uh <laughs> The, L- the LGC level, the LGC the, in space. Oh, yeah. oh man, oh man, maybe, maybe that's what we should do. I should make a level. Pedro should make a level. Ben should make a level, and just see see what is the least playable out of all three. <laughs> if you can defeat all three, you get a bite-sized Snickers. 
<laughs> something like that. I hope like I that. hope the level editor doesn't let you share it until you've proven that you can beat it. Um, Mario Maker <laughs> rules. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, you Trixie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why you because otherwise the that would be some bullshit. Box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a thing, but that's going to do it for this week. Episode 500, Native Linux Gamecast Weekly. We enjoyed hanging out with you. Hopefully you were able to choke down another helping of us. But on that delicious us bombshell, you can always find us 8.30 Eastern Standard Time every Saturday night right here on Twitch an hour before that if you're one of the cool mentally deranged people who support us via patron, you can hop into our pre pre super shows and hot takes on what's going on in the world science movies technology and i don't know star trek Trek. mostly star trek a lot of star trek in there and uh see how the sausage is made if you want to get a hold of me just add vin stone on the twitters or at vin because you like the mastodon i'll give you a mastodon it's at mast.linuxemcast.com i also post there when i remember I'm Jordan. I'm so big, I generate my own gravity. If you want to get caught in my orbit, check out Twitter at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. <laughs> and I would like to extend my thanks uh, slash apologies to the person that followed me on um, Mastodon earlier this week. A disorderly fashion. Thank you, and I'm sorry. I, I'm technically there, but I don't use it. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to actually get in touch with me on one of the social networks, Twitter, at unaccounted for that's that that's kind of where you should be going oh yes. man you gotta go check out his only fam <laughs> his, own, his only fans. <laughs> only fam <laughs> don't do that don't look that up and let's not wish it into existence let's roll some credits it's too late man i want some meatballs damn it <laughs> Barbecue sauce, that'd be very, very tasty. Gotta thank our advisors, you Omega Sartheran. Canadian <laughs> barbecue sauce meatballs? Yeah, all the yes. Barbara, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, uh, drummer, uh, Kohaku, George, Tomas, <laughs> our executive, executive producers, eh, and Chicago kicks ass, Darkwing, and Abstraction, aka Nixon's Pyramid. Ugh, fuck. Sea Wasters, Renault, Ryder X, Mac, and Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Strider, Nubbin, and David, with the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, and that's getting very tiny, Chad, Romeo, Hydrate. So uh, tiny. It's fine. <laughs> and these all fuckers. of the, um, the new fuckers, it's, it's it, they went away. The new fuckers. So fast. <laughs> Fuck too fast, too furious. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. LGC bye, bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. bye. <laughs>